Hello, Possum's Dreamer Smith here in Alpha Craft, and still on holiday. Now I find the crafting table. <sighs> After I make another one. <laughs> We're here in the village of the Darned, which is where KB got his villages from for his trading hall. I came back here a few months ago with a plan to do something, and there were no villages left. I don't mean they were all taken, I mean they'd all gone, they've run away or they've died or they've been turned into zombies or something. I went to all the trouble to bring a couple of villagers back. There's one down there, there's one running around here. And my plan with this is I want to turn this into a raid village for all the alphas so that they can come here, trigger a raid, the villagers will be safe, they can get hero of the village and all will be good. I've got another villager here somewhere, there you are. Don't go down there. Right. I want to get them locked up safely so I can start building. Oh. Right. Come on. There's a boat. You're going to get in the boat for me. I hate villager wrangling. Now where have you gone? There. Okay. Yay. All right. We're going to pop them both in this house over here because it's pretty much out of the way of what I want to do at the moment. When they're safely locked inside we're going to do some building up there. This may take me a few minutes. In there. No, no, no. Yay. That's one. Okay, I've made it this far. Right, now, both of you go inside, please, 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 oh, thank goodness for that. Okay, phew. That was a palaver, but they're both in there. Righto, there we go. Uh, they'll be safe in there. And we are going to work up here. I think it might be easiest if I switch this to a time lapse. Don't worry, I will be doing a tutorial for this house at some point. Okay, I'm going to get all my stuff together. And we are going to get time lapsing. Today I'm building my own little version of an Anglo-Saxon Norse mead hall. So we're starting with... A basic framework made of logs and I'm dividing up the lower walls but before I build the walls themselves I've got to put the roof in because the roof is a very particular shape and it dictates where the walls are going to go and also where other support beams within the building are going to go so it starts with quite a steep rise and then drops into a shallow curve up so I'm doing the rise at the moment which is block with stairs on top, go in one block with stairs on top and if you see me popping in and out of frame it's because I never seem to make enough stairs. Why I don't just make a whole lot and be able to keep building I don't know but it's always a trip back to the crafting table for more stairs. Now this mead hall is very much inspired by things like um, Alan Lee's drawings of Herot, which is the Mead Hall in Beowulf, in the first part of Beowulf. The ancient Germanic buildings that have been reconstructed at Falbau in Germany, or places like the Trelleborg Hall in Denmark, the stave churches of Norway, and of course, Medeseld, the Hall of Theoden King of Rohan in Lord of the Rings particularly the version that they built for the film. It's got my own little touches, but they're the main inspirations. Now you can see here, um, we're on our last steep rise of the roof and I'm preparing the roof for an extra little structure on top. This is going to end up looking like a separate house has been plonked on top, but there's plenty of historical precedent for this. And it does give the roof a much more interesting shape and adds a bit more interest to the building. And I'll just get the roof right. 
Uh, roofs are the bane of my existence. There we go. Now they match up left and right. And of course, here we go again. Get it right. <laughs> when the roof is about halfway through its gentle rise, I start bringing a gentle curve up on the ends of the roof as well as on the sides. And again, this is a shape with precedent, but again, it just makes the roof that little bit more interesting, um, a little less bland to look at. So here we go. And this is, you'll see in a minute what I mean about the roof structure dictating where the other support pillars come because they've got to come up in those corners of that gap. So this is for the upper structure of the building and I'm just bringing spruce logs right up in those corners. And then of course a roof on this because again that will dictate what happens to walls at that level of the building. I'll do tutorials of how to make smaller houses in this style and once you get the hang of it you can then build houses and structures of whatever size you want. For buildings with an upper structure like this one this is the smallest that I would make it. I think it's something like 15 by 17 blocks. Anything smaller it looks a bit weird but um, from this size upward sky's the limit. I've built really large versions of this type of thing on um, private single player worlds. I'll have to find an excuse to build one for you guys to see. But they lend themselves really well to grand structures. So we're coming up to the top of the roof and more stairs. <laughs> and now I'm putting a finial. So it's two upside down stairs with a slab on top of the bottom of the upside down stairs. And it's not a dragon, but I don't know, maybe it's a duck or something. Use our imaginations. And I'm spawn proofing that uppermost upside down stair with pressure plates. And I'm going to run a row of oak gates between them. It just gives that little bit of decoration. I can't do fancily carved dragon wood, not in Minecraft, but on this scale, that's not a bad compromise. So there's our structure done. Now it's time almost to add the walls. I thought I would just add the walls in straight away, but um, I decided to break up those large areas at the ends with uh, more oak pillars. And of course, you need cross beams for support. And again, breaking up those large areas of wall and more cross beams. Now you can of course divide this however you want. I just put the um, beams and pillars in or post wherever I thought it looked like it needed them. The walls here are oak and spruce. Some of those will get swapped out. And I'm leaving space for air vents so that the smoke from the fires down below will be able to escape up in the ceiling area. So again, you can see spruce and oak leaving space for vents and cross beams. And there we have it. That's the upper structure done. Uh, I decided to swap out the oak for dark oak of that decorative piece at the top and of course windows instead of putting glass panes in I'll be up in a minute with them why I don't carry everything with me I don't know it's dark oak fences and you have to imagine that they're louvers rather than fences so that the smoke can get out but days pre-air conditioning airflow was important and of course decorative detailing of fences along the posts. So now walls go in and I started with a mixture of oak and spruce but I later swapped it out at the front and back for birch and oak because all that spruce at the front it just got a bit too dark 
but I'm just filling in the walls with um, columns of different coloured woods just to add that bit of difference. I still have to work out texturing and detailing what I want to do but in the meantime at the ends leaving window gaps and as I said later I'll swap that out for birch but um, again instead of panes I'm going to use dark oak fence that all-important airflow but there we have it that's the basic structure of the Mead Hall Oh, it still needs more work. I've started decorating the outside as you can see, but um, there's a way to go. I'll have to think about it. I'll experiment with some things. Ow! But I think we'll just do a little quick look at the interior. we might call it quits for the day. I'm going to put some fires there and believe it or not the floor of jungle wood because I quite like that pink contrast uh, but I don't like this. Yeah that can come out. Okay I'll pop some floor in and of course torches all right, we've got some fires. And how do we keep villagers off those? Um, I'm thinking like this. Nice ornate fire grill. Yep, and that's why we've got fences for windows up there. Think of them as louvers to let the smoke out. got to put in seats and things because this is a mead hall and a large chair for the yarl but um, it's not off to a bad start is it? Well, I don't think so anyway. I don't think that's too bad for a day's work. Yeah I'm happy with that. <laughs> the raid village is off to a start. In between episodes I'm going to get rid of all these buildings and I might start planning out where the rest are going to go. And then we have to think about moving the portal. So on that note, you know what I'm going to say. If you've liked this, whack the like button, subscribe if you haven't, hit the notification bell, select all <laughs> and turn notifications on for your device. And that way you'll find out when my next video's out. And I will see you then. Bye!